Mice and small snakes and insects. They have talons just like the peregrines, but they're just tiny. That's a Extremely uh, sharp and, and uh, razor sharp, really. You might want to be careful because he'll jump on your camera and land right on it. Oh, good. Um, really, we have we have to keep a distance with okay. the, the rules, or the federal government will take the birds away. We have to have federal and state permits to be allowed to have these in our possession, but um, we also have to follow their regulations and pay them to renew the permits every year. They, they don't pay us to rescue wildlife. We, pay them to be allowed to do it. So we take in 2,500 animals a year, and um, not only is it labor intensive and exhausting, a wildlife um, preservation place? Please? You're I found it the center in 1990 at our home, but it's on 30 acres. And it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now we have 70,000 school kids a year for field trips. We've actually um, been, um, if you go to CNN, we're a CNN hero. Uh, this year, CNN came out and did a, a documentary about us, and in September you can vote. And if we were to win, be in the top ten, they pick 25 heroes globally. Um, if we're in the top ten, we would win $50,000. It costs $365,000 a, a year to run our center, so that's $1,000 a day. We have nine eagles at the center, about 50 hawks and owls, but we have bunnies and squirrels and possums and, and turtles and kind of every, anything native. Um, to Ohio and uh, you know again we have to be licensed but there is no funding so it's really a, a problem it's, we can't hire the size staff we need I only have a few girls and we use college interns we get about 20 college interns a year what is your name Wonderful. my name is Mona hi Mona Chuck glad to meet you this is a video, it's going to be on YouTube. Oh, wonderful. And I have uh, just Googled this Comerica TV in about two weeks, week and a half, when we get back and uh, get a chance so to do it. Thank you. And, uh, and then, uh, what do you call this? Uh, back to the Wild. So I'll put it on Back to the Wild, and then if you just type that in, you, people all over the world can see it. Wonderful. Well, thank you good. so much. You, I can get the ball that you want. Yeah, can we, can we get some other stuff, too? Yeah, good. Thanks. My wife. My wife. Here. You should put that over there, please. I have one. Excuse oh, okay. Mona Chuck. Very nice to meet you. you too. Chuck, uh, what's your last name? Schmidt. Okay. Yeah, we um, we want to teach kids about the habitat loss and the food chain and what we need to do to um, take better care of the earth. Oh. Oh, this eagle um, had West Nile virus in 2002. A mosquito actually had to bite her to give her West Nile. She lost her sight completely. She's blind, but this eagle remembers what it was to be free in the wild. She lived for 11 years as a normal eagle. She was born in 1992, and that band on her leg is a federal ID band. This is a state band. That's how we know exactly when and where she was born. Eagles are usually banded at eight to nine weeks of age when they're nearly full grown. By the time they're 10 weeks old, they're as big as their parents, and uh, they don't fledge or leave the nest until they're about 11 to 12 weeks of age. So it's a good time to band them, and the banding is critical research to help us understand their habits and what type of habitat they require. Because of DDT, the bald eagle population just crashed in the you know 70s and all over the country. Ohio had less, we only had four pair of nesting bald eagles in 1979. Today, Ohio has over 250 nests and about 2,000 eagles. And those, uh, most of those eagles are dark headed because a bald eagle doesn't get the white head and tail till they're five years old. So an immature eagle will still have, you know, a dark head and tail. Usually about age four, they begin to molt into their adult plumage, but it, their head doesn't really look white until five or six years of age. Um, it, a bald eagle um, nest can weigh over 2,000 pounds. That's one ton in a tree. Because the trees that are available anymore, because of us harvesting the big trees, the trees aren't able to support that kind of weight and they're collapsing, you know, um, before the nest reaches 2,000 pounds, but the largest nest in Ohio weighed over 4,000 pounds along the Vermilion River, so that was two ton. Florida had a, a 
6,000 pounds, yes. The um, voice you just heard is a little wimpy for such a large bird, and, and the movie producers aren't very happy with the eagle's call. So when you watch a movie with an eagle in it, they dub in the voice of the red-tailed hawk, which we have one back here. Red tails have a loud, piercing scream. She may jump in a minute and just back up really quick. If she jumps, she needs a minute to get you know, her pent-up energy here out. She's about ready to jump, and then I'll get her back in my glove. But I don't tape her jumping off the glove if you would mind not doing that. We're, okay, she's going to jump. We're going to let her. Just let her get it out of her. And that's just something called baiting. Baiting is, um, you know, falconer term, you know, when they jump off your glove. Just, she'll never stop trying to fly away. There's nothing wrong with her wings. We can't even let her fly in her 100 foot flight cage because, to for exercise, because she wouldn't know when the wall was coming up and she would literally be killed. So um, it's very critical that we keep her, uh, we move her around to about eight or nine different locations a day at the facility. I found it back to the wild in 1990, and um, if you go to CNN.com, CNNHeroes.com this year, we've been nominated a CNN Hero, and you can vote online in September and try to help us win um, at least $50,000. The top 10 will get $50,000. Um, the winner will win $250,000. It costs $365,000 a year to run a center completely on donations. There's no funding, no tax money, no state or federal help. But we do have to be licensed by state and federal agencies to be allowed to have wildlife in our possession. We have nine bald eagles at our center. Almost every single animal we take in is human-related injuries. We don't intervene if it's nature, but when it's when they're wrapped in netting or fishing line or poison, um, this eagle was hit by a train. Um, she was she had left the nest at uh, 12 weeks of age. When she was 15 weeks old, she was struck by a train just learning to hunt, and um, she lost one eye and. If you cover one eye up, you lose depth perception. So a predator with one eye is in trouble right from the get-go. Um, but these are both female eagles and birds of prey. The um, females usually are larger than the males. Uh, male bald eagles typically smaller overall, head, height, feet, everything. So we're going to put her back. Again, this man tells us that she was born in 1992. Banded at about nine weeks of age. She was born between Fremont and Sandusky by Pickerel Creek. And 11 years later, that's where she was found, within a quarter mile of her original nest site. Some more cows. Um, it used to be about 50%, but they're doing better than that now. By the way, in captivity, bald eagles can live over 50 years. Um, in the wild, they're typically live in 20 to 25 years. They're still being, um, they still have problems with uh, components of DDT that's been cleaned up and banned, but the DDE and PCBs are out there yet to, uh, and uh, we just got an eagle in with mercury poisoning. Their main diet is fish. Although eagles will eat roadkill, they'll eat snakes, they'll eat ducks and gulls and rabbits. They eat a variety of food, but their main diet, they are a fish eagle. Unlike the golden eagle, the golden eagles are, you know, red meat eaters. And they don't nest in Ohio. The golden eagles do not breed in Ohio. But they might pass through in the winter visiting just a few. Um, so a bald eagle comes out of an egg about this big. Ten weeks later, they're full grown. They're as big as their mom and dad at 10 weeks of age. Our mission is to help kids especially understand the natural world. If a hawk eats a snake who ate a frog who ate poisoned insects, the fish and frogs and birds ate the poisoned insects and they get sick. And then whatever eats the fish and frogs and birds, then they get sick. And it passes all the way through every link in the food chain. If you have a chain around your neck and one link breaks, the chain falls apart, right? In the food chain in the wild, if one link breaks or is poisoned or damaged, all the animals are affected. And we are, well, you know, we're a link in the food chain. We're one of those 